there's someone on the other side. Did a friend recently pass away? Uh, no. There was someone with whom you shared a deep emotional attachment. No. Someone not close, but not too distant. Well, but you liked them. Uh, you hated them. I, I did lose an uncle. I'm getting a J or a John, K, L, M, N, O, P. Uh, uncle Zed. Yes. Uncle Zed wants to speak. Uncle, Uncle Zed, my pet rat. Yes, uh, which is very difficult for me because I have to translate the rat speak. I, look, I, I didn't have a rat. I'm very disappointed that this dead rat is lying to me about being your pet, but this deceitful rat wishes you well in a new endeavor involving finance. Uh, uh, a TV show about science? Exactly. and. Your next subject is weather or zoology. Uh, pseudoscience. And I'm sensing you don't believe in it. <laughs> That's right. That's amazing. <laughs> How did he know? Do you guys believe in extrasensory perception? Yes. You can be a yes. 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 I believe in that. Well, like I heard over in Russia, there's people that can literally bend a spoon with their mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is like um, the heart line um, to see how sensitive you are, and this is how long your life is going to be. I believe in UFOs, and, and I know people who have seen UFOs. I believe a UFO did crash in Roswell, and they've been experimenting on it. OK, the UFO alien thing is a little much for me but I definitely believe in paranormal. People believe in all kinds of things. Astrology, psychic powers, alien visitors from other worlds. Now believers in these sort of things often use terms and techniques that may seem scientific, but they're not. We call it pseudoscience. Now if you're a skeptic, how do you tell the difference between science and pseudoscience? Well, I think I can see it in here. It's the scientific method. There's a saying, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. When we apply the scientific method to these claims, you know, they just don't hold up. And you might say, Bill, refresh me. What is the scientific method? Well, I'll show you. You probably noticed that when you accelerate in a car, you and everything else seem to get thrown back. That's not so remarkable. But now I'm going to make an extraordinary claim. The next time I accelerate, this balloon will move forward. Forward, you say? Why, why that's crazy. Well, it's my hypothesis. And living by the scientific method, we can test it. Let's punch it. Now, in science, we want things to be repeatable so that anyone can do the same experiment and get the same result. Now, this works because the air in the car gets thrown to the back along with everything else. Now, as the air sloshes toward the back of the car, it creates slightly higher pressure on the back side of the balloon, and that pressure pushes the balloon forward. Now, since air is invisible, this claim may have been surprising or extraordinary. The whole thing in science is that to be really sure of something in nature, you have to have a hypothesis or claim that you can test Otherwise, you just end up going in circles. This just in. Another crop circle was discovered in a rural area this morning, apparently made in the dark with no one around. This makes it the three billionth paranormal event that was not made in the light of day in front of credentialed scientists from MIT. You can't believe everything you see, especially that. That, that was a little cheesy. But firewalking is an ancient tradition. It goes back thousands of years. 
From the Himalayas to Hawaii, people have been using firewalking and secret rites, initiation rituals, and uh, double dares on Boy Scout campouts. But the thing about walking on fiery hot coals is that the coals are fiery and they're hot, hot enough to burn you. At least that's the way it looks. But I had to see for myself. We built this beautiful fire. It's going to burn fast and hot. Well, we look forward to that. And you know what, Bill? We're going to help it burn. Oh, yeah. We're going to help it burn with about Six five like... gallons of kerosene. Uh -huh, yeah. You ready for this? Look at that thing, So uh, if you're standing here, you can really feel the heat. We build this fire up. We're going to let it burn down. And then the premise of the bit, if I understand it, we're going to walk across. We're going to walk across the bed of coals. Now, Bill, this, this coal bed is about 10 feet long. And the temperature in the bed is going to range from 1,100 to 1,500 degrees. It's going to get hot in there. Mm -hmm. It'll take about an hour and 45 minutes we'll for this fire to burn down. We'll be here. OK, good. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Hi, and welcome back to Pseudo Today. With us now is Kyle Clench, author of Shut Up, It's True, a definitive history of fun fads in pseudoscience. Welcome, Kyle. Great to Thank have you. you here. I loved the book. I especially loved that bit about the Bermuda Triangle. Triangle, wasn't mm -hmm. that fun? The mm -hmm. 70s, that tropic theme, and you go flying into the Bermuda Triangle, and poof, you disappear into a different dimension. <laughs> Wish I could do that with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> then we got into the sort of crystals. Crystals were very huge in the 80s, and uh, literally, they were... Huge. I mean, they were huge. They were like, but they brought a lot of people together. That's how I met my husband. That saddens me. <laughs> then we got into a sort of regression, a past life regression, uh, which was very 80s, very inner child. It was really big at the party circuits. <laughs> Super. I love to party. It smells like it. <laughs> well, Kyle, before we go, do you have any predictions for the future? Yes. Uh, just got back from Ibiza, mm -hmm. Spain with the wife of 25 years. Oh, congratulations. And we found that rocks in pants, very Hindu, very Chinese, whatever, but it's all about the rocks in the pants. Oh, well, who knew? Anyway, thank you, Kyle, and you heard it here first on Pseudo Today. <laughs> anyway. I wasn't kidding about the smell. <laughs> so do you believe in ghosts? Yes, I do. And what do you base that on? Well, definitely not science. There are people who say they can connect with the spirits of the deceased and that they can predict the future. Those are pretty extraordinary claims. And the proof? Well, it's always been less than extraordinary. Now, some people say that extrasensory perception is beyond science, and maybe it is. But here at NyLabs, we conducted a little experiment to see just how easy it is to make it look like you have psychic powers. We invited Dr. Michael Shermer, the publisher of Skeptic Magazine, to come and read people's futures. <laughs> There's something, I'm getting something about your, a scar on your knee, on your left knee, or you scraped your knees, or something. Uh, I, yeah, I scraped my knee. You did? Yeah. Was this recently, or? Um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh -huh. The thing about the knee was funny, because I haven't scraped my knees in, like, 12 years, but, and I did just a couple of weeks ago, I fell down. So, this card tells us that there, there is a dominant there's two things going on here. There, there is some spirituality in your life, um, either traditional religion or, if not traditional, at least a, a strong component of some sort of spirituality. Does that make any sense? Uh, how does it? In, yeah, in different ways. Um, like when I was younger, my father was a Baptist minister. Uh huh. Well, there you go. That might be it. He wasn't stretching so much. I think he was pulling from things that were coming out of the cards um, rather than pulling things from me. <laughs> There's, uh, gosh, there's just a couple of weird 
the little things I'm getting, um, I'm seeing a white car. I don't know what a white car means, if this is somebody in your family or your friend or something like that. My grandma uh, has a white car and my huh. uh, friend from high school has a white car. See, I, told, I, I started off saying there's, I'm getting a couple of people here that are influenced. So I, I wonder if this other one with the white car thing is, is the grandmother. I wonder if it's grandmother sort of coming through in a sense. Something that he picked up on that did surprise me was about the white car. I don't really know where that came from. I think that I will think about my grandma a little bit and maybe talk to her a little bit more. So Michael, <laughs> you've never done this before. Nope, never done it. How long did you pe spend preparing for this session? Um, I prepared um, yesterday, basically one day. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a book on cold reading, I took a few notes, I went online and I read some stuff on palms so I could memorize the lines, so I at least sound like I know what I'm talking about. If I can do this in one day, anybody can do it. Yeah. Why do you think it is that people are just drawn to this? There is this transcendent idea that we can somehow transcend the here and now and connect the other side. There's no evidence that there is such a thing, but if somebody claims that there is, that pretty much is all that's needed with a handful of hits to convince people you can do it. So describe a hit. A hit would be anything that the client thinks is uh, accurate or true. But what they don't realize is that these things are true for almost everybody. The skin knee, the white car. You see, what, what's going on here is the psychic's not doing the reading. The person is doing the reading. And here's the key. They remember the hits and forget the misses. And they the think key. the psychic got the information, but they gave it to the psychic. Opinions Now with your host, Chris David. Astrology, is it real or bogus? Dr. Barbara Hale from some university somewhere, what do you think? There is absolutely no credibility to astrology. Quit waffling and answer now! Since the zodiac was invented, the wobbling of the earth caused the equinox and solstice points to move 30 degrees, so you weren't even born Dr. under the sun. Dr. Hale, if you don't have an answer, just say so. My own personal astrologer, Ramses, what do you say? Wait, your own astrologer? Dr. Hale, you had your chance, now shut up now. Ramses. Of course astrology is true. Didn't I say that someday you'd become the greatest talk show host? It's uh, true, folks. She did nail that one. And that very soon, the networks will realize your genius and you'll blow this crummy cable gig for good. <laughs> Great predictions! Dr. Hale, how do you answer that? Double blind studies show that astrologers' predictions aren't any better than pure Still chance. no answer! Ramsey, she's the best! There you have it. Astrology is true and you heard it now, here on Opinions Now! You believe in astrology? A little bit. Well, what makes you say that? because I can see the stars. You probably know your sign, or do you? Try this, wait for your birthday, then stay up all night and watch where the sun rises. It will pass in front of one of the 12 constellations of the zodiac. They say, I'm a Sagittarius. So on my birthday, you might expect the sun to rise in the constellation Sagittarius, and it did. 2,000 years ago when the Babylonians made all this up. But it doesn't now. In the last 2,000 years, the Earth has wobbled like a top. So now on my birthday, the sun rises in Scorpio, not Sagittarius. So maybe you'd have to be a Capricorn to be a Sagittarius, and Scorpios would have to be Libras. See, astrologers are off one full sign. In 2,000 more years, they'll be off two signs. But they don't seem to care. So, in these reflective moments, I ask myself, am I a fun-loving Sagittarius or a sexy Scorpio? <clears throat> we're gonna let this burn down, and then we're gonna walk across it, right? That's right. Is there something that you're doing with your mind? Is there something hocus-pocusy about well, it? Well, yeah, there is. Hocus-pocus is your term. Is okay. there something with your mind? that you have to do in order to walk across the park. There absolutely is. You have to change your mind. You have to change your mind about your belief about being burned on the fire. You have to believe that you won't get burned. You have to believe that you won't get burned. If you can conquer this, think of how easy it is to conquer some of those other things that are getting in your way. You know, so that's what this fire walk like is. Management. <laughs> like management? Like management. Like my old boss. <laughs> you don't believe that all you have to do is change your mind to walk on the coal. No. You, you, it's for you, it's pure physics, right? Absolutely. 
The fire's going like crazy now. Yeah. It's bright light over here, but yeah. we're going to let it burn down. Yeah. And then we're going to reevaluate. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Bill, once in a while I read my horoscope. Or if I'm at a party and there's a tarot card or palm reader, I'll get a reading. I mean, what's the big deal? Who gets hurt? Well, maybe no one. But think back when you were a kid. Maybe you saved up your allowance for weeks so you could order some x-ray vision glasses. And you put them on and you found that you couldn't see through walls or maybe more disappointingly, people's clothes. You're no longer disappointed when the things advertised on the back of comic books don't work as you might expect. No, now you've got adult anxieties and adult insecurities. And boy, when you've got adult anxieties, do they have stuff for you? Rhinoceroses, beautiful animals, noted for their big, hard horns. Now, for a long time, people in Asia would kill the rhinoceros, cut off its horn, grind the horn up into a powder because they believed that that powder would help a guy out sexually, some sort of aphrodisiac. But rhinoceros horns are made of about the same material as your fingernails. It's got nothing to do with human sex. There's no cause and effect here. I think the whole thing started when people looked at the shape. When I go walking through a store that has dietary supplements, there are a lot of products out there. I mean, a lot of products. There are a lot of products. So how do you tell the good from the bad? Well, it's really a consumer beware market right now because these supplements that are out there aren't regulated by the FDA. The manufacturer is the one responsible for regulating what's in the supplement. So it's a little bit like the fox watching the hen house. I, I think one of the products that is creating a lot of concern right now are ephedrine containing products. Because ephedrine is a very potent substance that can have very dangerous side effects on the body. Many times on the bottle will say natural. Right. So ephedra is natural, right? Right. But natural doesn't mean safe. And that's a really important myth that's important to dispel. What I say to people is tell that to Socrates when he was taking his swig of hemlock. They Hemlock's gave him hemlock, natural. They gave him hemlock to kill him. That's right? right. So then how do these companies stay in business? What is it that they offer that people want? I think they offer the magic bullet. Everyone is looking for that quick fix. And I think particularly in a society where we're very focused on weight and appearance, the majority of the different supplements out there are uh, marketed for weight loss. Dietary something. Exactly. Right. And to lose weight takes work. It's exercise and it's paying attention to your diet. And if there's a pill that's going to melt fat overnight, great. You know, people are interested in that. So they are appealing for that reason. But there probably isn't such a pill. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> If you had to tell people uh, how to be skeptical or what they should look for in a dietary supplement, what, what would you tell them? Well, I think they have to start by looking at the claims on the bottle. And if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. They need to look at the manufacturer. They need to contact the manufacturer and ask questions. Some manufacturers may be forthright in presenting the information and have very good quality control with their supplements, but others may not. So it's important to ask those questions. It's important to take a look at what the ingredients are and always share with a healthcare professional whether or not you're taking those because dietary supplements can interact with medications. Can you give me an example? Yeah, ginkgo biloba would be one and vitamin E. They both act as blood thinners. So going into surgery, it's important the surgeon knows if you're taking those because you could end up hemorrhaging. And that would be bad. Absolutely, that would be bad. <laughs> you may not make it off the table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, 
you could put anything in there. I mean, how hard would it be to come up with a concoction to put in a bottle and sell oh, as a dietary supplement? It would be easy. You and I could do that. We could put together a concoction and claim that it's going to enhance memory, and we could sell it. <laughs> Now what we couldn't do is claim that it cured or treated or diagnosed a certain disease. And we'd have to put in that bottle a disclaimer that it wasn't evaluated by the FDA. But that would be in such small print, no one would ever see that. And we'd be able to market that as something to quote unquote enhance memory without any scientific basis. Let the consumer beware. Absolutely the consumer needs to beware because you really don't know what you're getting in that bottle. These products can go to marketing without any testing for safety, efficacy, potency, or purity. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Let the consumer beware. In the Kalahari Desert, Kalahari there's, a, Desert. there's a tribe of, uh, of Bushmen who have this concept. They're, they're called the Kuhn. And they have, this, uh, they have this concept called Noon. And it's energy. It's your own internal energy. And as that energy inside you starts to boil up and you start getting more excited, hey, your heat is actually hotter than the flame. So, Tony, you hold your hands like this. Yeah. I've used NLP anchors that associate this position with relaxation and comfort. NLP? And security neuro-linguistic programming. Neuro, okay. All right. So you're now going to walk across the bed of coals. I am. Now, now, wait a minute. This guy is doing his spiritual preparation. He refers to NUM, NLP, and being fired up. Well, I have a different approach. Take a look at this. It's an ordinary piece of paper and a candle. One, two, three. You see it charred. It started to burn. But now we'll do the same demonstration with another piece of paper wrapped around an ordinary empty aluminum can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you see, the paper's not burning. This is exactly how firewalking works. The paper is like your skin, and the can is like the muscles and bones of your foot. The heat passes right through the paper into the can. In the same way, heat passes through your skin into the muscles and bones of your foot. But here's the thing. This paper is much less likely to burn than your skin is, because your muscles and bones, the meat of your feet, don't conduct heat the way a can can. But I'm confident this paper did no spiritual preparation before attempting this demonstration. No, it's just the nature of the universe. To, to walk across Sorry, excuse me, can I go? Yeah, sure. Are you ready so to go? I, I got to tell you, I really, all I'm trusting is the science. OK. Well, there I did it. I walked on fire. Now, does it matter whether I was psychically prepared or just trusted the science? Well, yeah, it does matter. You see, would you rather be fooled by a magician or a psychic? I mean, a magician does tricks to entertain you. A psychic does things that are inconsistent with science. To me, science is beautiful. Science is empowering. And walking on fire is a result of natural laws. You might say, hey, Mr. Uptight Science Guy, why do you want to spoil all the fun? Well, I have a lot of fun with science. The reason it might seem so tough or unbending is that it has to be. Science is a process, a way of looking at the world. Remember, there are people out there trying to take your money. To keep that from happening, to keep from fooling yourself, try science. It's rewarding. It's fun. It's fascinating. Look into it. And I'll see you next time on The Eyes of Nye. We've covered a lot of ground, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. Check out eyesofnigh.org for more cool science.
Major funding for the